Just like a typical Filipino family, Celso and Elena once dreamed of living in a decent place and calling it uniquely their own. But things didn't go their way because aside from the lack of opportunity to start on their own, the couple had barely enough money to sustain their basic needs. Nirahan kami dati doon sa Maranding, Lanao del Norte. Yung iniisip ko at pinapangarap ko na magkaroon ng sariling bahay. Iniisip ko lang na positive sir, na makamit ko yung pinapangarap ko. Na makatapos yung mga anak ko kahit maliit lang sa ahod dati. Sa tiyahe ng asawa ko, doon kami nakatira muna. Yung trabaho ng asawa ko is bikiri. Isa pa lang anak namin noon. Wala pa kaming bahay kasi bagong bago pa. Paano kami makabahay? Imura lang ang sahod ng asawa ko. Being the head of the family, Celso almost grew tired of their slow progress. Much more his wife, Elena, who stood helpless amid their situation. Until one day, they finally got the chance to get ahead in life. Ang masasabi ko dito sa lugar ng matling, ang ganda, <laughs> matahimik, at saka iba talaga ang matling. Successful talaga. Kasi, siyempre may mga relatives kami na pumunta dito, tapos pakakita sila ng mga lugar, yun pala ang matling, ang ganda. Months after earning his badge as a regular employee, Celso got what he had always dreamed of, his own home, and the chance to give his family a better life. Saya naman sir kasi magkakaroon ng kwan, sariling bahay, 22 years na, since 1997. Sa bahay lang, kita muna na pinakahalagahan nila ang yung mga trabahante nila, yung mga empleyado. Kapag sa bahay, magandang sahod, yung mayroong tubig, mayroong ilaw. Aside from government-mandated benefits, the Talit family began reaping more than what they had to sow. A kind of hope trickles down even to their two offsprings. Simula silang mag-aral, binigyan sila ng scholarship. Simula ng grade 1 hanggang nakatapos sila ng high school. Yung privileges po nung nabinibigay ng company is free tuition po ng school. Tapos meron pong books na binibigay po sa amin na libre din. Tapos yung teachers din ng school is highly competitive. So yung education na nakukuha namin is maganda po talaga and parang ready for college na po. The company also provided livelihood programs for the employees. Subscribing to the principles of inclusive business, the company provides an opportunity for their workers to be part of the company's value chain, not only as employees, but as suppliers. Like this cassava farm, the crops that are harvested here are sold to the company. This provides a steady additional income to employees like Celso. Ito ay farm ng kasaba na binibigay ng management sa mga empleyado sa Matling. Isa lang ito sa mga binibigay ng management na livelihood project para sa mga empleyado. This only shows that employees become more inspired about their work when they feel that the company takes good care of them. It's really hard to empower employees unless you know or you are concerned with their wealth because it's hard to empower them. You need to have some sort of interaction, what their concerns are, what are their needs. That's very important. The company believes that investing in the far south, particularly in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, or BARM, attracts no less than the favorable factors going on in this side of the country. A strong potential that comes from its strongest core, its principled and dedicated workforce. There are lots of benefits that they are getting from us. Number one is you supply their need. Once you supply their need, you get the respect of the community, whether it's Muslim, non-Muslim, or Christian. So it's a interrelation, good relation between the Muslim and the Maguindanao and the Maranao Muslim and the Christian. It could be Catholic, Protestant, or whatever. Why Mindanao? 
you know, Mindanao is always called land of promise. Yeah. But if you look at a lot of the social indicators, parts of Mindanao also suffer from the worst performance you know, in terms of poverty, health, nutrition, education. Yeah, so we've been doing projects. We started as an organization that would work with small communities and organizations, and then eventually finding our way into helping craft a peace and development agenda for Mindanao. It's been a challenge, but I think it's something that we need to continue doing. With all these, the Mindanaoans can achieve their full potential and create ripples of positive change in their communities. Una, pasalamat ako sa Panginoon na nilagay kami dito, ang peaceful sa Matling. Tapos, yun, ang sobra kong pasalamat sa Matling kasi nakatira kami dito, na yun ang binigay niya sa amin. Natupad ko ang mga pangarap ng aking mga anak. For those who really got to know the lay of the land, the stigma coming from the peace and order situation in Mindanao ceases to be a gray area for investment. One of the many companies that took a stake in this beautiful and promising peninsula is this corn wet milling company in Sultan Kudarat. Largely, it's uh, agro-industrial, our business. So most of the things we buy are local. And then for the renewable energy side, that's biomass. These are agricultural residues that otherwise would be just left in the field to rot. We're buying corn cobs, rice husk, coconut husk, which nobody uses, sawdust, and uh, including fruit fiber, empty fruit bunch. The Corn Wet Milling Company has been around since the late 1960s, bringing innovative technology to the agro-industrial sector and providing locals the opportunity they need through employment. Among them is Jemayel Lalau, or Jem, a Muslim engineer. After I graduated and passed the board, syempre nagtry ako maghanap sa mga big cities for syempre bigger opportunities. But then once nagkandak kang Cotabato, LGU, I think that one, for a job fair, nakita ko nga nandun ang lamsan. So I tried applying. Luckily, nagkaroon ako ng opportunity. In his eight years of working in the corn wet milling company, Jem found his purpose by being able to provide for his family and being an inspiration to his fellow Mindanaoans. Aside from dun sa mga benefits, I enjoyed working in field. So, nagbibigay yun sa akin ng challenge. So, with the learnings from work experiences na nakakasalamuha mo everyday, it molds me in how to become a more independent individual. Nagbibigay yun sa akin ng job satisfaction. Both migrants from different provinces, the couple Luigi and Luci Peña, found their safe haven in Cotabato under the corn wet milling group of companies and also found their niches in their fields of expertise. Galing ako sa legal background from banking and then support. So, uh, medyo challenging nang hinawakan ko itong pagmamanage ng cargo handling company. Maganda ang compensation package ng company. Ako po ay galing Bulacan. So ang company uh, is providing me housing. A scholarship din na ginagrant ang company sa mga officers tulad namin. Andiyan din yung opportunities for their learning. During interview pa lang kasi nandun na yung pagka-inclusive nila na o oh, sa company natin, ganyan sila mag-discuss sa'yo. Parang ramdam mo ay eh, parang nag-a-apply pa lang ako na part ka na ng company. And then during my employment, every time may mga naisip silang plans, kahit na wala ka naman talagang involvement dun sa iba, pero the way they share their vision for the company, so maramdaman mo yung involvement mo, yung output mo din na guided by the company's values. So, kay siguro wabot ako ng 13 years. The Corn Wet Milling Company owes their success to excellent management and the dedication of everyone taking part in their operations, no matter how big or small. The company is only as good as its employees. You can have all the best machines, but without the people, you can't run the company. That's the most important thing, the talent pool you have in the company. Recognizing the need to do more, to do well, 
businesses like the Corn Wet Milling Company are able to leverage the impact potential of inclusive business throughout Mindanao. Since our founding in 1971, we've really been advocating how we can create sustainable businesses and investments in Mindanao. Why are you promoting this in a conflict-torn region such as the ARMM, which eventually will be the bar market. For one, I think conflict is really tied to a lot of historical issues, but it's also tied to the lack of development. So we think that peace can be achieved only if there's real, genuine development. Number two, because of the Bangsamoro organic law, there is an opportune time, which is today, for us to, to help out. What's in it for the PESP? This is our mandate. How can businesses participate in poverty reduction? You bring down poverty levels, but you also increase overall quality of life and wealth for those who need it the most. How can this help in the overall development of the BARM? I think there is recognition that for our country to develop and for BARM to progress, it is not enough for just the public sector to take on these challenges. There is an opportunity for companies and businesses to come in, but also with the right mindset, with the right framework and also with the right attitude in understanding the culture and the values that are in bar. Indeed, success is not just about reaching the top alone because in this part of the South, businesses, the local government, NGOs, and the community work together hand in hand to achieve inclusive growth and development.